Now you can see it. Okay, now we can start. Hello, everyone. It's an absolute joy to have you here. Uh, if you've never been to one of my lectures before, uh, welcome. It's an absolute joy to have you here. My name is uh, Gabriel Erickson Salin, uh, or Babbling Goat, as you can see here. And I am 24 years old, and I'm a guest lecturer at universities, companies, cities, and states within, for example, but not limited to LGBTQIA+, social psychology, behavior culture, organizational culture, and more. So I have a lot of fingers in a lot of pies <laughs> and always had uh, for my entire life and uh, this week i've been uh, a guest at a german university uh, at a lecture by absolutely fantastic anna jones official here in chat it's been an absolute joy to be a part of that and uh, last year, uh, about October last year, I was a lecturer within LQIA Plus uh, for, the, uh, for the professors in the nursing department here at the university. And it was so much fun uh, being able to do and provide some education there as well. Other people I have educated within the subject is, for example, management and HR in different companies and also uh, the regional police chief uh, where I live. Uh, so I absolutely adore doing this. I've been a lecturer for about six years now and yeah, I'm absolutely loving it and I'm happy to be here to be able to spread some education to all of you. Uh, so I am an openly queer transgender male, which means that I was when I was born, I was assigned the gender female at birth or I was given the gender identity female at birth. Uh, well, I really very quickly said, oh, no. I am not female, I am indeed male. <laughs> it was simply the word who perceived me as something else. Uh, so I am a transgender male. Uh, so today we're going to be having a little bit of a lecture and then we're going to be having a Q&A. The Q&A is going to be one of the main parts today because I want to be able to answer any type of questions you might have. So if you have any questions, write exclamation mark question in chat. You'll be able to find a link there to a Google slide. We'll be able to ask your questions. You can ask these questions both anonymously and not. Uh, so you can send them in right there. Uh, also, when it comes to the questions today, there really aren't any red lines. And when I mean that, what I say is that if you've had a question that you wanted to ask for your entire life, maybe or maybe it's a question that you don't know how to word. You don't know which word to use, which words are okay. Uh, if the question itself is okay, uh, or maybe you just don't know how to ask it. Don't worry. Today is a day where you can be able to ask this uh, to me and other people as well. So if you want to ask me if I have a cock or a pussy, you're more than welcome to ask. And while I'm using the words such as that, it's to really show that we do not have a red line when it comes to questions here today. If you have something on your mind, ask it. And then we'll take a look at the question together and we'll see, okay, how was the wording? Was the wording good? Was the wording not so good? And if it wasn't, why wasn't it so good? So we'll take a look at it together. You can either ask the questions through the link that's been sent out there, or you can also write them in chat. And my lectures are very interactive in that way. So I'm going to be asking you questions as well regarding terms, for example, regarding how long time you think my uh, some things might take as well. Uh, so you're almost more than welcome to write in chat. I encourage having discussions in chat as well and reacting to what's happening uh, on stream. Uh, so uh, you are more than welcome uh, to ask any type of questions discussions in chat uh, so yeah that is what we're going to be doing today we are going to be looking at various different types of things and as you can see here on the screen uh, stream we are going to be working us on transgender pronouns lgbtqia plus and more and well what does that mean well that means that we're going to take a look at for example different words that's associated with transgender people we're going to be looking okay what does the word trans male mean what does non-binary mean? Gender queer? Are all of them the same thing? Are they not? We're going to be looking at pronouns. We're going to look at different types of pronouns that you can use when it is appropriate to use them. And is pronouns uh, related to your gender identity or are they separate? We're going to also be taking a look at is gender identity and gender expression the same thing? And just also what that might mean. And we're also going to be taking a look at gender inclusive language. So we're going to be looking at, okay, this gender inclusive language, how do we make your language gender inclusive? What do we do to make it gender? Is the word dudes gender inclusive? Is the word queen, even when used as a gay slang, is that gender inclusive? 
So we're gonna be taking we're uh, gonna be taking a look such as that. And yes, it said Galas apart. We do seem to have uh, a troll in chat as well as well. Uh, but today we're not taking a look at the trolls. Uh, I believe in my mods and my mods have uh, quite a few of them here, and they're ready uh, to ban whenever. Uh, so let's just ignore the trolls for today uh, and just focus on some education. Uh, so that is what I'm going to focus on. And it also says LGBTQIA+, which means we're going to take a look at LGBTQIA+, as well. What do the words mean? Why is the acronym important? And why are the words themselves important? Well, and why can it be dangerous to say, oh, we should just have nothing at all to some people, even though we might feel like it's not dangerous. So we're going to be taking a look at all of that today. So if you have any type of questions, you're more than welcome to ask. The only question I'm not going to be answering is what was my name uh, when I was born? Because really, it has absolutely no relevance. <laughs> so that is the only question I won't be answering. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to ask uh, questions. Because as I say, is that if you do not ask, how are you going to know? Not everyone knows everything. We all learn, we all live, and we all grow. And yes, I am a lecturer within this, but that doesn't mean that I know everything either. We all have various amounts of knowledge. When it so if you have any type of questions, you're more welcome to ask. Because if you do not ask, how can you know? And speaking of questions, we are going to be starting with this. As you can see here, we might have many, many different types of flags here. Maybe some flags that you haven't seen, that you haven't, you know, uh, had before, maybe. Uh, or maybe some uh, flags, you know. So flags that you maybe haven't seen before, some flags you've maybe been using. Uh, so we are going to be taking a look at those flags and what those mean. And not only the flags, uh, but also just uh, what they stand for. So what we're going to be starting here is to see the question says, What does LGBTQIA plus stand for? Oh, well, that is what we're going to be start to looking at. Uh, thank you so much for mentioning uh, pasta la pizza. Oh, not pasta la pizza, uh, not home. I've, I'm just going to, I think it's good that I've erased my mic maybe a little bit since I'm talking a little bit more quiet than I do usually. Uh, 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 but I do not have a directional mic. I do not have a directional mic. We're just going to be fixing that real quick. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because usually I'm very loud and I'm not as loud today. <laughs> so let's see. Oh yeah, it was lowered down automatically. Interesting. Interesting. That's why. Thank you so much for holding, babe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, what does LGBTQIA plus stand for? Well, I said that the only way to learn, or one of the few ways to learn, is to ask. And so my question is coming to you now. What do all of you think that LGBTQIA plus stand for? Write in chat what you think the words might stand for. If you know all of them, maybe write one of them. Uh, and if you think that you might know but don't really know, uh, write it in chat anyway and we'll take a look at it together. So if you know one, write one. Uh, if you know multiple, write multiple. So what do you think that LGBTQIA plus stand for? And we are going to be having parts here as well, like these are one of them, where I am not going to continue until you're written in chat. That is how it works. <laughs> Because we are all learning together. Uh, lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual. Where lesbian, gay, tra uh, gay, trans, uh, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and sexual. Yes. As you all are saying here, LGBTQIA plus stands for lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, intersex slash intergender and also not only a sexual but asexual a romantic and agender and some more identities within there as well and the plus stands for everything that is not included within the acronym so everything that is not included within the ac an acronym we can find there and as you can see we have various different types of flags here for example the mid one we have the general pride flag to the left uh, to the top left corner uh, we have the pansexual flag to the right corner we have the bisexual flag then we have the asexual flag the intersex flag the transgender flag and then the gender queer flag the general neutral the gender or oh, the gender fluid flag yes yes oh and then we have the non-binary and then we have everyone oh yes i know my flags i'm very proud of myself because one cannot know all the flags. There are multiple. But I'm, I, I remember now. And I'm very proud. 
<laughs> but we have uh, tons of different uh, flags here and there are even more flags as well than the ones that we are seeing on stream so we're going to be taking a little closer look of what all of these mean however before we do that when we're going to go into definitions it's a very important thing to know here because when we're talking about definitions where it uh, is about a per person's identity they can all vary so even though there might be a definition they can be different depending on the individual and so it's important to remember that the code is what you more would you call more like guidelines than actual rules so all of the definitions are more guidelines than what you call actual rules. And yes, I do absolutely adore this GIF. I do absolutely adore it. <laughs> uh, so it's important to remember that when we're talking about different uh, definitions, and I'm going to be saying this multiple times as well, uh, these are all guidelines, not actual rules. And so we just went through what that acronym means, and it means lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, asexual, aromantic, agender, and more, intersex, intergender, and then uh, everything that is not included uh, in the acronym above. Uh, and I think, are you hearing the, the host alert as well, or is it just me? Because if you're hearing it, I need to turn it off in Streamlabs, I think, or is it just me? Or are you hearing it as well? Do not hear it? Okay, it's just me. It's just me. Never mind. It's just me. <laughs> That's good to know that it's just me. I was like, oh no. <laughs> but it's just me. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone that's followed, thank you so much for the follows and welcome in. Welcome, welcome in. Uh, so these are what the letters stand for. And so generally, we're just going to go through uh, the general terms and the general definition for the terms. But once again, it's what you more call like guidelines than actual rules. So, generally, as a guideline, lesbian means uh, someone identifies as a woman uh, that are sexually attracted to other women. Gay, uh, gay is used both for men and for females, uh, or fem uh, men and women, uh, and other types of gender identities as well. Uh, but when it comes to the gay word itself, it is more commonly used for homo or for homosexual men. So men who people identify as male and uh, are attracted to other people that identifies as male. However, once again, it's important to know that gay is often used interchangeably with the term homosexual, uh, which can be anyone that is uh, attracted to the same person that has or. Whew, English difficult, English not my first language, just so you know. So it can also mean uh, well, homosexual is someone that is attracted to someone that identifies with the same gender identity as you have. It's important to know that gay is used interchangeably. Generally, in the acronym, gay means uh, homosexual men, however. Bisexual, uh, bi uh, is a Latin prefix, and it's a Latin prefix that stands for two. Uh, and it's currently also it's important to know that I do not inter have interpretive precedence when it comes to bisexuality. I do not identify as bisexual. And so I know that currently there is a discussion within the bisexual community uh, talking about if bi means only attracted to two or attracted to two and more. I do not have interpretive precedence within that area, uh, so I'm going to be mentioning both of them. Uh, so bi, bi itself is a Latin prefix for two, and you can find it, for example, in bi-weekly, so every other week, for example, or bi-monthly. Uh, so it all depends uh, that this definition uh, is currently currently on discussion within the community, and it's important uh, that those get uh, to have that discussion because they have interpreted precedence within it. So for some people it means only two, for some people, like people in chat are currently saying, it means uh, two or more, for example. So that is bisexuality. Transgender. Transgender uh, means someone that identifies as trans, which means someone that do not identify with the gender identity that were given upon birth. So I am transgender because when I was born, uh, everyone said, oh, female. And I said, no, very much not female. <laughs> so I am a transgender male. And we're going to be going in more in depth later what transgender mean, uh, that it's not binary. It can be binary, but it doesn't have to be. Then we also have the word queer. 
And this Q then stands for queer. Queer is a term that a lot of people are worried if they're allowed to use or not because it has been for a very, very long time been used as a slur towards uh, queer people. People identify within LGBTQIA+. It has been used as a slur for a very, very long time, but people are currently starting to take back the word and have been doing it for quite a while as well. So people are taking back uh, the word queer um, to and use them for identifications for example i identify is as queer when it comes to my sexuality uh, so i'm queer when it comes to my sexuality and i am a uh, homo romantic which means for my romantic side uh, that i can only get romantic feelings and attraction towards someone that identifies as male since i identify as male and queer for my sexuality uh once again uh it's very important to remember that it's, this is not guideline. Uh, this is guidelines, not actual rules, and that is specific. Uh, that is very, 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 very important when we're talking about the word queer, because queer rit literally means undefined, and it's up to the individual what that means for them. For me, for example, queer in my sexuality means that I can be sexually attracted to pretty much anyone. Uh, but it depends. It depends on the person. It depends uh, on where we're at, uh, when that time is, what we're up to, how we're feeling, how I'm feeling. It all depends on so many various different aspects, and it doesn't always have to be uh, the same uh, the same type of attraction. It's all different for me. Uh, so that is queer for me, undefined, and it's my definition. So queer is especially a word that is very individual um, to the person. And let's take a look at here as well that Umila said. I thought anything extending Dubai on the binary would be pan. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, pan when it comes to pansexuality. Uh, that basically the there are of course various differences, but basically pan uh, pan is also a Latin prefix meaning all, uh, and pan means that you are attracted to the personality. And then, what that person might identify as, uh, what that person uh, might have for type of gender expression or type of genitalia, doesn't really matter. Uh, it is the person that matters, and you fall in love with the person and the personality in and of itself. Uh, and yes, asexual, so A, they will have, so the A stands for asexual, aromantic, agender, and more. Before we start talking about what those various things are, I want to make it clear that A does not stand for ally. A does not stand for ally, even if some people might want it to stand for ally. It doesn't stand for ally. It stands for asexual, aromantic, agender, and more. And basically, A, A is once again a Latin prefix that means none or little, for example. So when we're putting that in front of like asexual, it means it's an individual who have little to none or specific uh, sexual attraction. And it's important to know that not every person who is asexual uh, is the same. Absolutely not. Uh, their sexuality is very, it is, uh, it, it can be fluid, it's a grayscale. So it's really up to the person. So just because someone might say that I identify as a sexual, but they feel sexual attraction towards some people, uh, that doesn't mean that they are not asexual. Uh, that means that, okay, that is that what, how that person feels. They are still asexual if they identify as a sexual, but maybe it's a specific person that I'm, I'm okay with you. I don't mind you, for example. Uh, and some people are repulsed by sex and some are not. And Justice Lewis is saying there, sexual attraction is not the same as sexual drive. Some And some people are repulsed, some people are not. Uh, it's really, really up to an individual and it is a grayscale. So that's important to know that there is no clear line of what is and what isn't. Everything is guidelines, not actual and then we've replied that to a romantic, it is the same, but on the romantic aspect instead. So, for example, you can have romantic attraction towards someone, which means that you might not necessarily be sexually attracted to them, because but you have romantic feelings towards them. That is romantic attraction. And a romantic is someone just say sexual, but on the romantic spectrum instead is someone that feels none, too little, too very specific romantic attraction towards someone. And a gender is the same, but 
on gender identity. So it's someone that identifies as non, very little or specific or very specific when it comes to gender identity. That's why we have ace flux, demi ace, and grayscale is more exactly, exactly. Those are also definitions uh, within asexual to explain further uh, where one feel like they are and what they identify as. And you can also have sex without having sexual attraction, not uh, endless sex asexual for it. Exactly, exactly, uh, completely as Emma says. Completely as Emma says. Uh, and yeah, a lot of people think that because you're asexual doesn't mean that you do not have sex. No, it's about sexual attraction. Uh, it's about sexual attraction. There are multiple people who are asexual that, for example, watch porn. And they're like, yeah, nice. And that doesn't make them any less asexual. They're still asexual within their identity. They are still valid. And it is a grayscale. Then we're coming to the term intersex and intergender. Uh, and once again, I do not have interpretive precedence. I am not intersex. Uh, and also, this is the area where I have the least education within. So that's important to note as well. Uh, but intersex and intergender, and correct me if I'm wrong, please do. That's As I said, this is the area where I have the least education within. And that is, for example, but not limited to, um, people who are born, for example, uh, with different uh, different combinations of chromosomes, a different combination of genitalia, for example, and more. It's not only limited to that. And a lot of people are born intersex slash intergender, uh, but do not know that they are, uh, because the parents never tell them, pretty much. That is, sadly, incredibly common. Uh, so that, uh, that as well. So that is what intersex, or so the I, stands for. And then we have the plus, and that is for everything that is not included within the acronym. And there, for example, we have, uh, we have, for example, uh, different types of gender identities um, that maybe do not want do not want to identify within the transgender umbrella. And we also have different types of sexualities. For example, pansexuality. Uh, we have. Um, and we have polysexuality as well. Polysexuality uh, means that you are attracted to multiple, for example. That's the difference between them. So that is what the acronym means. Uh, so lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, asexual, aromatic, agender, and more. Intersex, intergender, and everything that is not included within the acronym above. And once again, important to remember. That this is all guidelines, not actual rules. And when we take a look at these different types of words, a lot of people think, okay, but why is this so important? Why are there so many letters in the acronym? Why are we adding more letters? Can't people just be? And now we're going to take a look at why letters are important. But before I do that, I just want to answer Domila's question. And Domila says, I think I'm demi, but also bi or pan. I'm not sure. Past months have been confusing for me. And it's important to know here, Demi, uh, or Do uh, Domila, that when we're talking about Demi, so Demi means demisexual. Demisexual means that you can only have a sexual attraction towards someone that you have a deep relationship with. That is what that means. And Demi is not its own sexual orientation in and of itself. That is something that you can put on, uh, on basically any type of uh, sexuality. So you can be homosexual and demisexual, which means that, okay, I'm attracted to an individual uh, that has the same gender identity as I have, but I can only get a sexual attraction towards them when we have a deep relationship, or romantic attraction towards them when we have a deep relationship. So that is not something that excludes anything else. So, for example, you can 100% be demisexual and bisexual, or demi and pan. 100%. It is something uh, that exists with sexualities. So, yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. If you have any questions, if we can get an exclamation mark question in chat, uh, you can put in the questions there. And we're going to all be taking a look at it after stream. It doesn't have to be related to what we're saying on stream right now. Uh, it can be uh, just a question you've always wanted to ask or something you come to think of. So you're more than welcome to click there and ask your question. Uh, all questions can be anonymous if you like to. You can simply click in if you want to ask them anonymously. So, what we're going to be doing here now then is we're going to be looking at, okay, why are these letters important? Why are we adding more? Well, 
I'm going to be asking you first. Why do you think that these letters are important? What is your spontaneous thought? So we do not need to have an answer or no, but what? why do you spontaneously think that it might be important, for example? Because everyone is important, absolutely. Representation, visibility, normalization, absolutely, absolutely. Do I have any more thoughts uh, of why it might be uh, that these are important? I'm going to let all of you uh, write some. Gay, actually I'm quick. Actually I'm quick. Actually I'm quick. Uh, 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 having words and terms to relate uh, to each other. Absolutely, absolutely. A sense of belonging, finding people like yourself. Yes, yes, yes. I consider myself uh, panromantic, polyamorous, potentially somewhere in the sexual spectrum, still figuring that out, to be honest. And I'm also flipping between non binary, gender queer. But when asked, I simply say I'm queer. It's easy and I like it. And then that's fantastic. That is fantastic. I'm happy uh, that you found a way to express yourself that makes you happy. Representation, yes. Visibility and education is important, they're needed. Because I don't want people to assume I'm hetero and a girl, yes. To be able to understand and make more sense of what you might be feeling and to reassure others there's nothing wrong with them. Being able to describe yourself is more important than your personal identity. And yes, all of what you said is 100% accurate. What I've written down is recognition, identification, safe spaces, support system, and happiness. And of course, a lot of things more just as what you've uh, mentioned in chat, like visibility, for example. And so what I mean when I uh, put up these terms is that A, recognition. It's to show that we exist. And histori uh, historians might say that we haven't existed, that it hasn't been uh, a thing for a long time. And I just want to assure you that, no, we have existed for the entirety of history. For example, in ancient, ancient Greece, uh, it, you were not a part of the norm if you weren't poly. If you weren't polyamorous, you weren't a part of the norm. And it's the same with gender identities. Gender identities as binary identities, male and female, and they only exist too, did not become a thing until the 18th century. It's an 18th century construct which you can blame on Carl von Linné, uh, who is a Swede, and I apologize for all of the Swedes, uh, who was a scientist when it came to flowers and he wanted to uh, make sure that we had all the flowers in specific, specific places, and uh, he wanted to categorize all of them. Because science that day, uh, in that day, or in that time, was categorization. You categorize everything. And so we categorized uh, he categorized flowers after female and male, and he categorized animals after female and male based on external organs that the normative society said that humans have. So even though flowers and animals do not have something called female and male, it's just simply that humans, or more specifically, Carl von Linné, decided to categorize them in a way that's been categorized uh, for humans as well. But that was a categorization that happened, and that's when it becomes even more of the binary norm. And the binary became a huge thing. It wasn't really a big thing before then. So, recognition is important. Because we've existed for the entirety of humanity. We truly, truly, truly have. Even one of the most famous pirates ever. One of the most famous pirates ever, people say, oh, this person is Blackbeard. Blackbeard is one of the most famous and was the biggest pirate ever. No, Blackbeard was not. It was Annie Boyle. Annie Boyle was a pansexual, polyamorous woman uh, who also, one of her partners, were a transgender male. And she's been together with multiple people and they were together with each other as well. But history does not show her. She is, she was Queer. There's been multiple people in history that's been queer as well. So, recognition, because we exist and we have existed uh, for the entirety of history as well. And it's also not only historical recognition, but also recognition right now as well. To show that we are here, we are queer, we exist, we deserve human rights. So, the LGBTQI plus acronym is important to give recognition to us within the community that are uh, there are minorities, and to normalize the fact that we exist. 
They also have identification. And then when we're looking at identification, what we're talking about then is for us to be able to identify ourselves and to be able to find communities that we find are safe spaces, communities that we belong, communities where we can be ourselves. So even though it might seem like tons of different, tons of different words and so many of them, you are all valid. And the annoying thing is that just as the thingy shouted there, like, why are you all out here? You cannot hear the sound of Brindle coming in and chat. But I could hear the sound of com Grindel coming in in chat. So suddenly I hear a scream <laughs> that goes, why are you all out here? And I, I need to turn that off. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to disable all of these. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, there we go. There we go. They're now all, they're now all, um, all disabled so i won't hear i won't hear the noises anymore <laughs> so yeah identification and that is for us to be able to identify with people to be able to identify ourselves for example i didn't know that i was trans until i met a person that was trans one of my friends dorian who has been on testosterone for about one to two months now didn't know he was trans until he met me and got to know what trans is and we have multiple people in the community and we're talking easily over 50 who when they become a part of the community realize that they are trans and that is because it's important to be able to find a place where you find safe and to find words that you identify as so us talking about different types of terms such as demi or pan or bi or trans or bi gender agenda when you actually hear those terms and see those parts of the acronym and you talk, you, you people hear about them like, oh, that's me. And you are valid. And so having the different terms and showing that identification gives you something to identify with. And you'll be able to find more of yourself if you feel like you want to identify within those words. You'll be able to find other people identifying the same manner. And you will feel, you will see that you are not alone. You are not wrong. You are not broken. You are valid. You are real. You are exist. You exist. You are human. So the terms are important for identification. And it might seem to normative people uh, that do not identify within the LGBTQIA+, and might not understand why the acronym LGBTQIA+, is important. It might be because you have society to show that you are not weird, that you are not broken, that you are not wrong. You have society that shows you that you are valid and that you can identify with because your identity is the norm, it's the normative. But minorities, such as LGBTQI plus individuals, do not have that. Because we do not see that in the everyday world, because we are not part of the norm. And so it's important that we be able to have and see this identification here. And also, as it says underneath, to be able to feel safe spaces. To find safe spaces where we can belong, where we can be us. So with that identification and with that recognition, also then comes places that shows that we are safe. It's created by people within the community that shows, hey, you're safe here. This is a queer space. There are multiple trans people here. You can be safe. You can be yourself. You can enjoy yourself. You can find yourself here. And if we didn't have that recognition, if we didn't have that indication, if we didn't have the acronym, it would be so much more difficult for us to be able to find a safe space. This is not the best comparison, but imagine it a little bit that it's like you, maybe you love a soccer team, okay? You love this soccer team or football team or hockey team. You love them. And so you 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 have your, let's say you love Manchester United. Oh, people are going to be hating me for saying Manchester United now as the example. But imagine you love Manchester United. You love that soccer team and you are waving their flags. You are chanting their songs. You're wearing the shirts to show that you are a proud Manchester United fan. And then you see other people and you're like, oh my God, we love the same thing. 
and you can immediately identify with them you can immediately talk to them because fuck yeah you know that you belong to a group where you at least share something in common we feel the same when we see pride flags when we see trans flags we see gender fluid flags bi flags pan flags we feel the same because suddenly we see someone is openly saying hi i'm safe i know what this flag means and so instinctively you can feel a little bit safer with that individual so that is why it's important to us because it creates safe spaces where we can be safe where we can feel safe and we can find each other and that is so important because then we can create support systems which means that we be able to support each other through ordeals that we are going through for example, when it comes to transgender care in a lot of the world, there are no support groups for transgender people that is created by the states or created by the hospitals. The support groups are run by people that are trans to be able to show support because it's heavy ordeals. Being a part of a minority can be incredibly heavy. It can be incredibly damaging. It can lead to immense anxiety. It can lead to deep depression because you are not part of the norm. And when you go out, you are not accepted. So being able to have these safe spaces, we can create these support systems where we can support each other and show that we are safe and talk about things that we might want to talk about. So for example, this stream is a safe space and a support system for a lot of people. Whenever they've had a bad day or maybe they want to ask questions regarding their identity. They know that they can come here and ask those questions because we will be able to support as much as we possibly can. So we can show we are safe. We can create support system. And also one of the most important things why we have the LGBTQI plus uh, acronym is happiness. Because if we find some place where we belong, it makes us happy. To be able to find ourselves makes us happy. To know that we are valid, to know that we are loved, to know whether we are safe, makes us happy. So people might say, oh, just remove the acronym. Why do you need to have so many letters? When are we going to stop adding letters? I get that it might seem weird if you're not in the community, but that's once again that if you do not identify within the LGBTQIA plus community, you have society to reinforce that you are a part of the normative. We don't. And that is why the acronym is important. Then there are people that do not want to identify within the acronym, and that's okay as well, that's valid. The acronym is important because of that. It makes sure to validate people and their identities. Gotta take a question here from Mecca in chat. Speaking of safe spaces, yes, and recognizing flags, yes. What do you think of allies using the LGBTQI plus tag on Twitch? Do you think that undermines people finding LGBTQI streamers or it's like and more like uh, a live pop having a pride flag in the window? Uh, I know that that is a big discussion right now. And I've looked both uh, a lot of both sides. And what I've come to right now is that I understand that allies want to use LGBTQI plus tag. I really, really do. Because they want to show, like as you're saying, like hanging a pride flag outside uh, of, of your cafe. I completely I get that. I understand that you want to use it um, to be able to show ooh, that you uh, support the community. And I know that it's well meant. But there are other ways that you can show that. Uh, and you should let LGBTQI plus people use the tag to be able to find other LGBTQI plus, uh, LGBTQI plus people. So what you can do instead is that you can, for example, change the title of your stream 
Uh, you can write uh, hashtag LGBTQIA plus there. Make sure to uh, write in your bio that is LGBTQIA plus uh, inclusive. Make when in your about page where you have different types of panels, write it there as well that you are open, that you are inclusive. And uh, make it a part of your rule chat. So whenever you click to chat, it sees it shows there that you are a part uh, of, uh, of being an ally. Uh, so you can do it in that manner instead which I think is a lot better uh, because a lot of people go into the LGBTQI plus tag to find people that are LGBTQI plus to try and find these safe spaces and support systems. And even though an ally can absolutely offer that, there are better ways for an ally to do it currently than to using the tag. Uh, so that is how I think, and perhaps it would be better for, uh, for Twitch to add an ally tag uh, as well, so you can show even clearer uh, within uh, the tags. So, we've been taking a look at some words now, and now we're going to be moving onwards for a few other words as well. And this means we're going to be asking some questions for you now. And we have been talking about the LGBTQIA plus acronym, and now we're going to be focusing a bit more on the term trans gender because that is a big part of what we're talking about today as well and so i want to ask you what do you think the word trans means so not transgender just the term trans what do you think it means what do you think it means so write in chat and i'm going to be drinking some water while you write opposite absolutely Prefix one to the other. In between or change, transitioning, moving from one to another. Absolutely. Short for transitioning or transitioning. Absolutely. Transport, port to port. Um, we have transformative. Yes, absolutely. We have a lot of great, uh, great uh, definitions there. So the word trans in and of itself. So the word trans is a Latin prefix and it stands for on the other side of. So trans is a Latin prefix that stands for the other side of. A lot of people shorten transgender to trans, which is 100% okay, but the word trans in it of itself is a Latin prefix. So you've seen it, for example, in the term transgender, transportation, transfiguration, transmutation, transplantation, for example. So you've seen it in so many different terms because trans means on the other side of or from port to port. So that is what trans. And then we're going to be taking a look at another word because when we talk about trans, we hear another acronym as well. And this is cis. What do you think the term cis means? And I'm going to be drinking some water again. And giving a few calls. On the same side, so we have on the same side. Same. Uh, regular use in chemistry to describe serious opposites of uh, chemicals. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, probably on the same side, probably on the same side. Yes, as many of you are saying, cis means <clears throat> on the same side of. So cis and trans are opposite of each other. And just as Riot is saying there, both of these terms are commonly used within, for example, chemistry. It's commonly used within maths as well and physics. And that is because trans and cis are Latin prefixes, meaning on the other side of and on the same side of. Uh, so they are Latin prefixes. Hang on. Uh, there we go. Uh, so they are Latin prefixes. So you can find them in tons and tons uh, of other places as well. And I completely understand you, Candice. A lot of people have only heard the word cis in a negative way. And that's what we're going to take a look at it as well to really make sure that people understand that it is not, uh, it is not a slur. 
Uh, Nindra, uh, the best way to ask a question is if you can write exclamation mark question in chat. So if anyone have any questions in chat, uh, uh, you can ask them in chat and I will be able to look at some of them. Uh, but if it's something that you want an answer to, it's better to write exclamation mark question in chat. And there you will be able to find a, a slides form where if you go in there, you'll be able to ask your question. You can ask anonymously while, by clicking in, ask this question anonymously and you can send in the question. Uh, so ask the question there and we'll take a look at it in the Q&A part of everything uh -uh. so that is what trans and cis mean and here is then the difference between trans and cis when we're talking about trans people and cis people uh, to answer your question there makoto it all depends uh for the intersex intersex slash intergender individual they can absolutely identify as cis, but it can also identify as trans. And it depends on the person. Uh, because once again, these are all uh, more guidelines than actual. So, a cis person, it's someone that identifies with the gender identity they were given upon birth. And so a trans person is someone that do not identify with the gender identity. Oh! they were given upon birth and this might seem like a little bit of a mouthful which is understandable it might feel a little bit like a mouthful but why we're saying it this ma in this way and not for example oh uh, he was born a man man and she is now a woman or went from female to male or went from male to female for example is because those type uh, of wordings can be incredibly dysphoric to some people for example, for me, there is a shortening car called FTM, which means female to male. I do not identify with it, and I do not want people to use that towards me either, uh, because that implies that I've gone from female to male, but I've never identified as female in my entire life. It's only society has perceived me as female. So I do not want the, want there to be someone implying that I have gone from female, for example. And yes, it is very medicalized as well. Uh, so it's important that we actually make sure that people feel comfortable. And some people are going to be okay with FTM and MTF, and that's fantastic. Uh, but that is up to the individual if they're okay with it or not. So for example, for me, uh, if someone asks me, oh, are you FTM? I say, oh, uh, I don't use that term uh, because it, I find it dysphoric for me. Instead, ask me if I'm transgender. Yes, I'm a transgender male, for example. And uh, to answer your question there a, uh, about AFAB, AFAB is also very similar to this. Uh, AFAB means assigned female at birth. And you have AMAB, which is um, assigned male at birth as well then. And I, myself, do not like those terms uh, because it's similar to FTM for me because it once again says that I was assigned a gender at birth which once again then implies that I've gone from one to the other which once again I haven't some people are 100% okay with it and that is completely up to them so it is depending on the individual uh, so for me, I do not want to be referred to like that. For me, it is some. Uh, I am someone that do not identify with the gender identity that I was given upon birth. Uh, and also when we're talking about this, a lot of people say biological gender. And now is here we need to talk a little bit. And it's the same when people say biological sex. It's very, very common that people say biological gender or biological sex. And they mean, for example, male or female. A lot of people say, oh, okay, but you're male, but you're biologically female. And no, I'm not. And that might seem a little bit weird to people uh, who have not thought about this before, but we're going to get into it. So don't worry. So basically, when we're talking about these types of things, what we mean here is that when you say biological female, what do you really mean? What does what defines a biological female? Are we talking about genitalia? Are we talking about reproductive organs? Are we talking about chromosomes? Are we talking about brain substance? Are we talking about hormones? What are we talking about? So that is what we have to specify. 
And people might say, oh, well, it's a female. They have a vagina and this and this and this. Well, there are cis women that do not have a vagina. There are cis women that was not born with a normative chromosome set. And there are cis women that have a lot of more testosterone in their body uh, than, than the norm. So just because something might feel like, oh, yeah, this is a female. No. It's nothing that is biological in that manner. And chromosomal and hormonal level, that is what most people argue. But once again, it's not the same for every individual. It's different. And so what's important why we're talking about this here is that especially when it comes to transgender people, a lot of a lot of times people say, OK, but when you go into the hospital, you can't write that you're male. You have to write that you're female. And I understand what people mean, because like, oh, you have a female body. Let's dissect that for a little bit. I do not have a female body. And people might say, oh, but you were born with this and this and this. I might have been. But the thing is that if I write female on the form when I go into the doctor and they need to give me medication and they're going to give me levels of medication based on the normative values of a normative cis woman, that can kill me because I do not have the same values as a normative cis woman. I do not have the same values in my body. I do not have the same hormones in my body. Uh, my medication, so me taking testosterone, I've been testosterone for about five years. And um, that is affecting me in so many different ways. Uh, so I can literally not take the same levels that is standardized uh, for a cis woman because it can be incredibly dangerous for me. So I can't write that I'm female. And then people say, okay, okay, okay. But, but your genitalia. Okay, let's take a look at the genitalia then. What I have does not work nor look like a cis woman's vagina and that's because of testosterone so when i went uh, to take a look at it at a nurse uh, uh, at the doctor's office because you know you have to do tests every now and again i couldn't go to someone that was specialized uh, with uh, with that uh, sexual organ because they had no idea what to do and I couldn't go to someone uh, that was specialized in dicks either because they didn't know what to do. So I needed to go to someone that was specialized in both. And this person had never worked with trans people before, and that's 100% understand. But since they had knowledge of both, they were able to give me the best possible care. So saying to trans people, well, when you go into a hospital, you need to write the gender you, uh, the gender, gender identity you assigned to uh, as at birth. That can be incredibly dangerous at those. And so it's better to be talking about, okay, what sexual organs do you have? What reproductive organs do you have? What chromosomes do you have? What hormones do you have? And instead break it down because it's different to so many individuals. And by doing that, we can provide better care, not only to transgender people, but to cis people as well. And also someone saying, oh, biologically female can be incredibly dysphoric because then you're placing the term female upon me when I am not female, which can be incredibly dysphoric. So yes, Jessica Koneko says, don't ask what's your gender, ask what do you have if you mean sexual or reproductive organs. Instead, ask about that. And if you come in and you're going to be going uh, for like exactly what Haribo is saying, like a broken finger, it's not relevant. But if it comes to something that is relevant, well, then you might have to disclose that you are trans to make sure they get the proper care for you. So that is very, very important. Uh, and so instead focus on uh, what exactly you are asking about and know that it can be in incredibly dysphoric because I am not biologically female I'm not so that is why we try to not use terms such as that because we have better terms with better words to vocalize what so instead ask exactly exactly more what it is you mean sexual organs do you mean uh, chromosomes do you mean hormones and instead focus instead focus on that instead now 
We've talked a little bit about the words trans and cis, and now we're going to go over to a few terms. We're going to go through these terms together, and when we do that, we're going to be doing it together in chat, of course. So, here, I have a few terms, and I want us to go through them together. So, if there is a term that you recognize here on the screen, uh, maybe you know exactly what it means, or maybe you don't know, uh, write in chat now what you think that word might mean. If you know multiple, write one. If you are incredibly sure, uh, let some other people uh, get in a possibility to say something as well. So give them a few moments. Uh, so are there any words on this screen that you recognize? Write in chat the words that you recognize and we'll go through them one by one together. And as per usual, I'm going to take a sip of water. All of them? That's good. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. There should be riot. It's uh, I'm Swedish, uh, and in Sweden we we write them together. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we like have a content warning uh, for some of those? By the way, we can absolutely, we can absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That name for sure? Absolutely. I'll make sure that whenever I have a content warning, uh, I will be uh, raising my hand when we talk about it and putting it down when we stop talking about it. I don't want to say anything, but it goes don't wrong. Don't worry at all, babe. This is why we're here to learn together. So a lot of people, uh, a lot, a lot of people uh, know all of the terms. So which one should we start with? Write a term, one of the terms in chat that uh, you feel like we should start with. With uh, which term? Which term? Uh, 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 uh. That exact act what you're gonna be looking at, Mar. With that exact what I'm looking at. Gender fluid. We've gotten some for gender fluid. Gender fluid. Uh, uh, uh. Because for some, uh, for some uh, uh, people, lady, uh, some different, uh, some different terms and similar can be uh, can be triggering. Uh, for example, for bad memories and similar. Uh, that is why. Let's see, we have we have a few different ones, so let's start with the first one that was written in the chat, which is gender fluid. So we're talking about gender fluid here. Uh, so gender fluid, we're going to be wrapping in some different terms then as well when we take a look at gender fluid. Let's at the same time uh, take a look at non-binary as well. So, when we take a look at that, we're also going to take a look at transgender and trans person. So we're going to go through those three words together. So first of all, Transgender and trans person, as we talked about before, someone that is transgender is someone that do not identify with the gender identity that they were given upon birth. So let's say you were given the gender identity uh, female upon birth, and you're like, no, I'm not. Then you're trans. Because someone that is cis identifies with gender identity that were given upon birth. Someone that is trans do not identify with the gender identity that were given upon birth. So trans... It's an umbrella term for everyone that do not identify with the gender identity they were given upon birth. And then we have different terms underneath them. Two of those terms are non-binary and gender fluid. So we'd let's start with non-binary. Non-binary, then we're talking about binary genders. And when we mean binary genders, we say male and female. And someone that is non-binary do not identify with the binary. So the non as none, and then binary. So they do not identify with the binary genders. That is an individual that is non-binary. Do not identify uh, with binary genders. More often than not, then identify uh, as a gender uh, as gender neutral. Uh, and there are so other types of gender identities as well uh, that are not male and female. So it's all up to the individual themselves. Once again, these are all guidelines, not actual rules. And yes, uh, there are absolutely people that identify as non-binary that do not go under the term trans. Uh, I myself do not. Uh, oh, uh, little pyrocat does not. Thank you, Lupar Cat, for speaking up. Thank you. So there are a lot of people that do not identi that identify with non-binary but do not uh, go under uh, trans. It's a personal choice. Some people want to distance themselves from the community 
uh, because they do not find it supportive, for example. Uh, and some people see trans as only trans man and trans woman. Uh, so that is why people sometimes uh, do uh, not identify under the word trans. So once again, these are guidelines. Actual no guidelines on actual rules. All of this is always up to individual. As Andrew Seidel was saying, not all binary individuals end up very trans. So using a hierarchy with trans uh, cis as a top doesn't exactly work. Academic or heavy, it's generally accepted. Yes. So when we're talking about academic and education, that is generally the way people put it. But it is always fluid. It is always fluid. And it's completely up to the individual themselves. So what we know is that trans means do not identify as, it means on the other side of. But one that is non-binary, for example, and so then is not cis, does not need to identify with the term trans. Because exactly like Anasariable says, commonly trans is seen as another binary. Because generally, when people say trans, they mean trans man or trans woman. When they say transgender, they mean someone to identify with the binary. So there are people that are non-binary uh, or do not identify with the binary. They do not want to identify under the term trans, for example. This is completely understandable. So these are all guidelines, but actual. So someone that is non-binary do not identify with the binary and there are multiple different pronouns they can use and also uh, we're going to be talking into pronouns later uh, so we're going to be if people maybe were thinking oh uh, pronouns do not mean your gender identity don't worry we're going to be taking a look at that later so uh, when we're talking about non-binary it's someone that do not identify with the binary and then we have the term gender fluid gender fluid is someone that is fluid within their identity. This can be within binaries. It can also be outside of binaries. It can be for a bit of binary and for a bit of not binary. So someone that is gender fluid is fluid within their gender identification. This means, for example, that maybe one day they identify as female, another day they identify as male, another day they identify as uh, gender neutral, for example. Uh, or, uh, or yeah, gender neutral, uh, or other types of gender identifications. So they are fluid within their identity. What's important to know here is that a lot of people think that, okay, but if you do not identify, like if you do not identify the same thing, like your gender identity is fluid, does that not make you fluid in your personality, fluid as a person? So it's very common that a lot of people think that when you are gender fluid i now forgot the name of the diagnosis hang on i'm gonna no no i'm gonna be taking up a name because i need the right name i always mix these two together hang on hang on Yes, I did remember. I did remember. Okay, so a lot of people think that when someone is gender fluid, it means that you have did. Associative uh, identity disorder. Associative identity disorder is not the same thing. That's a completely different thing. And some people when i say did generally what people think of when what with what did means is schizophrenia and what's important to know that when you think of schizophrenia you might be thinking of oh different types of identities within each other that is not schizophrenia schizophrenia is for example but not limited to paranoia hallucinations and similar not only, but similar, and there are other uh, other uh, other parts of diagnosis as well. So that having multiple identities is not schizophrenia. That is dissociative identity disorder, and that both of those both of those 
are completely different. Uh, yes, Alex. Yes, Alex. So it's D-I-D. Uh, in Sweden, we say did. <laughs> uh, but D-I-D in English. Thank you. Uh, so these are separate things. Different. Uh, they're different diagnosis. And they are completely separate. From gender fluid. No, nothing to apologize for, Alex. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you. So, that is completely different from gender fluid. Gender fluid is a gender identity, so just because you're gender fluid does not mean that you have DID. Completely different. Completely different. Someone, someone that is gender fluid is fluid within their gender identification. So that is gender fluid. Then we also have identities, for example, as gender queer, and gender queer is someone that identifies as queer within their gender. And we're talking about queer before when we're talking about my sexuality. Uh, and once again, queer, it's up to the individual how you define it. And so gender queer is up to the individual as well of how they define it. Uh, so that is completely up to them. So then we have had non-binary, gender fluid, and gender queer. Three different terms. It's also important to remember uh, that some people say that if you identify as non-binary, uh, if you identify as uh, gen uh, gender fluid, you are non-binary. It's important to remember that definitions are guidelines, not actual rules. Everyone who identifies as gender fluid does not necessarily have to identify as non-binary. It's up to an individual. For example, I have friends that identify as both gender fluid and non-binary because they are gender fluid within non-binary identities. But I have other friends that are gender fluid but do not identify with non-binary because they are gender fluid within binary genders. So some people identify as both. Some do not. And that's important to remember. It's Yes, as Lucy is say, uh, saying, uh, a spectrum is too limited. It's a giant ball of multidimensional balls of gender. It is, it is complex because it is fluid. It's so much more than one definition. So one does not have to identify as one uh, to identify as the other. One can, it does not have to. So now you know, now you know. And we also have different types of gender identities that we're not going to go into right now. But that is, for example, agender, bigender, pangender, and similar. Which I will take a look at before. We talked about agender, a meaning none, uh, very little, uh, to uh, non, very little, or very specific. Bi, uh, two, or multiple. Pan, all. Uh, poly, uh, uh, poly, multiple, for example. Uh, so there are more different identities there as well, and we also, uh, also have different identities such as no choice as well. So there are multiple different gender identities. So we've gone through transgender, non-binary, and trans, uh, and transgender, non-binary, and gender fluid. Also for all the people who've come into chat, hello, welcome, hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. For all of the followers, thank you so much for the followers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so we've gone through transgender, non-binary, and gender fluid. So let's continue looking through. And since we're talking about transgender, let's take let's take two off there as well, which is trans man and trans woman. So as we talked about before, uh, trans generally means uh, and uh, or means a person that do not identify with the gender identity they were given upon birth. So a trans woman is someone that identifies as woman. And a trans man is someone that identifies as man. But for me, example, I'm a transgender male. And as I've said before, that means that when I was born, I came out of my I came out of my mother's womb, and the world said, Oh my god, it's a girl. And I said, No. I'm sorry. It's a boy. You know? And so I identify as male. And when I was born, society said female, and I said, no, I'm not. So I am a transgender male. And a transgender female uh, was then, society said, oh, your identity is male. And the female said, no, it's not. 
So that is transgender male and transgender. I also have two swigs for everyone. Take whatever it is you're drinking because hydration is important. And take a swig. Skull! Okay, okay. Ooh! These mental images are great. <laughs> I'm happy you like him. I'm happy you like him. Okay, okay. So, now we're going through those terms as well. And then we're going to be taking a look at another term. So, we have trans transsexual, transvestite, deadening, and outing. Which one of these four words four, would you want to take a look at? Write one of them in chat and the one with the most written, the one that has been written three times first, is the one we're going to take a look at. So, we have one for outing, two for outing. One for three for outing, four for outing. Outing it is. So uh, we're going to be giving a little bit of trigger warning for this. Uh, we're going to be talking about outing. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to raise my hand during the trigger warning. Uh, and when we're done talking about outing, I'm going to be lowering my hand. So trigger warning, outing. Uh, outing uh, might be a word a lot of people have not experienced before. So outing means that you are telling someone or somehow showing someone or doing something that shows that a person is trans. So for example, uh, let's say you have a friend that's trans and you're talking with a colleague and you say, oh, they're trans. Then you're outing that person because you are telling other people that they are trans without their explicit consent. So then you're outing someone. Uh, you can uh, you can be doing it in multiple manners. Uh, you can be outing people, not only for example, for telling it to people, uh, but for like writing it online or showing it in other things as well. And yes, it doesn't only have to be gender identity. It can be sexuality as well. So if saying so, for example, oh, he's gay. Well, then you just outed him as gay because it's not your thing to tell it's not your information to share even if you maybe want to it's not your information to share because you're taking just as Hervari is saying there you're taking away the control from that person and just going ahead with it so for example what happened to me is that I came out to my mom uh, and then suddenly I got a letter in my letterbox from my great grandma uh, and now my great grandma is a wonderful human being uh, and the letter it was nothing bad about the letter at all it was absolutely wonderful um, but so in like in about a span of less than a week my mom I told her that I was trans. She told my grandma that told her friends that told her mom. And so suddenly I was outed to almost the entire part of my mom's family. And whenever she talked to a relative, like a relative I hadn't met since I was five, she outed me. So she was saying that I was trans without my explicit permission. I was trans. And that is outing because you're taking the control away from me and telling other people. And you might think that it's a safe person to tell, but you have no idea what type of relationship I have with that person. You have no idea what type of harm that might put me in. Maybe I live in a part of the city where it's not safe for me to be open about being trans. And then you talking about it loudly at the mall will out me to people I don't know. Will out me to people that I might live next, that might be dangerous to me in my everyday life. So that is outing. Now, as I said, luckily, the, the mail or the letter I got from my great grandma was lovely. So I was lucky. Uh, and the letter she wrote me, because uh, I picked my name, uh, Gabriel then, uh, which is name I picked. 
Uh, and I I told my mum, and then I got this this letter from my great grandma. And it's important to note that my great grandma was it was like ninety two. <laughs> okay, she was like ninety two when this happened, you know. Uh, and I got a letter home, uh, a handwritten letter in the mail, and as my great grandma always does, uh, always did, she didn't want to destroy uh, the the letter like the. Uh, the letter itself so she always put a piece of paper into the letter and wrote the message on that so she could just close it so i could use it again in the future uh, that's what she did but on this time she actually wrote uh, she wrote on the card itself this time and she wrote that uh she always called me her angel and she wrote uh, hello my little angel it doesn't matter what name you have it doesn't matter how you identify you will always be my little angel and i love you i like that you picked the name gabriel because when you lived on the island called gotland there was a little child uh, down the street and his name was gabriel and i kind of liked him he was nice i love you tons love ingeboy p.s it's good that you picked male, because we have very few in the family. <laughs> the absolute best! <laughs> so when people say that the older generation cannot, un like, does not understand or cannot learn... Mate, she was 92! <laughs> And she understood, and she never misgendered me. She never said the wrong name. Just from that second, she was nothing but accepting. And whenever someone said anything, anything wrong, she corrected them immediately. So it doesn't matter how old someone is. They can learn. And she did. And she was absolutely amazing. And I still have that. I still have that the card. I have it hanging over there. I always hanging, have it hanging. Uh, so it's hanging over there. And uh, she was an absolutely wonderful human being. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, so outing is when someone outs you. Says that you are, for example, trans. Uh, says, for example, that you are gay. Uh, or anything about you that you have not given them the explicit permission to say. So that is outing. Trigger warning of outing over. She, she absolutely won. She was an absolutely fantastic human being. She was very, very, she was very, very strict about that. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, n not many things matter. The only thing that matters is that you're happy and that you're finishing your studies. She was very, very stern on that I should finish my studies. Uh, and then that I was happy. Those were the two priorities in life. Always. <laughs> no matter what. Those were the two priorities in life. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at a few terms as well. Now we have transsexual, transvestite and dead name. Uh, so let's write in chat uh, one of those three words. The first word that comes to free, we are going to be taking a look at. So transsexual, transvestite or dead name. One for dead name, two for dead name, two for transvestite, three for dead name, four for dead name. We're going to go with dead name. Okay. We're going to go in with the word dead name, uh, which means, ooh, then we're going to take a look at that word. And once again, going to give a little bit of trigger warning here. So we're going to be talking about the word dead name. I'm going to raise my hand uh, when we're talking about it. And I'm going to be uh, moving down the name, um, down the hand uh, when we don't talk about it. And no, MP, I'm actually not gay. That's embarrassing for you. Oh. Okay, mate. That's really embarrassing. I mean, do your research. Come on. Oof. Oof. <laughs> so, we are going to talk about the word dead naming. So, trigger warning. So, dead naming. Dead naming is when you use the word, or you use the word, you use the name uh, that someone was given upon birth. 
that you do not identify with anymore. That is dead naming. And why it's called dead naming is because that name is dead. And it's not a name that should be used. So I have a dead name, for example, uh, which is the only question I won't answer, as I told you before. And so when if someone dead names me, that means that they say my old name to me, uh, which sucks. It is incredibly dysphoric. It 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 feels like it stabs you, kind of, because it shows, it, it makes you feel like your identity and all the struggles you've been through, all the things you've done. Nothing of that is valid. That's what it makes you feel like. That nothing you've done is valid. And that it's just a face, or that it's just fake, and that you will always be that name. So I uh, I had a person in my life that's no longer in my life, um, that dead named me, and basically said, Oh, but I grew up with you having this name. Can't you always be this name for me? No. No. It's... No. That's not me. And that sucked. And that hurt. Because that's not me. And it's the same whenever my... Uh, I have a... As a lot of you know, I have an incredibly bad relationship with my mother. And uh, it's getting better, but you know. Uh, and whenever she talks about me as a child, she always dead names me. She always misgenders me. And misgendering means using the incorrect pronouns for me. Uh, so she always, always does that. Uh, no matter how much I tell her that even if you're talking about me in past tense, it's still Gabriel. It's still he, because that was always me. So that's what you say. Not, oh, when Gabriel used to be. No, I, I, I never used to be. It was just you that decided to call me that. That wasn't my name. I never identified with it. It made me angry. It made me sad. It made me hurt. You know? So dead naming is when you say someone's name, do not identify with them. That is dead name. And it is something that really do try your absolute best to not do it. And if you know the person's dead name, try to forget it. Just try to forget it, because you're never going to be using that name anyway. So that is what dead naming it. Sometimes it happens by parents, and it's understandable to a certain degree, uh, because it is a changing process. And that's important to remember, we all grow through, we all learn, we all change, and they need to change uh, the words they use as well. Um, but it's never okay to use it on purse purpose. Uh, so that is, it's never okay to use it on purpose. And if you know the dead name, try to forget it, and try your absolute best to not say it, to not say it. So that is said naming, and I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put a hand down, and now we're going to looking at transsexual and transvestite. Which one are we going to start with? Right, one of the words, and the one first of three we're going to take a look at. So transsexual or transvestite? Transsexual or transvestite? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? One for transsexual? One for transvestite? Three, two, three, oh, 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 next one wins, next one wins. Transvestite! We're going to take a look at the word transvestite. So, transvestite. A lot of people think that people that are transvestites are transgender. And here is the important thing. Transgender is a gender identity, okay? Transvestite it's a gender expression, okay? And when we're talking about that, is that I have a gender identity, and then I have an expression, how I express myself to the outside world. That can be normative, for example, normative masculine, normative feminine. Uh, it can be, well, me. <laughs> it can be many, very many different uh, gender expressions. And your gender expression does not change your gender identity. 
that you can identify uh, as male and have a normative female gender expression. And that doesn't make you less male. Okay? And what people are talking about is that it's cross-dressing. Yes, we're talking about that as well. Uh, that is then transvestite. However, cross-dresser, it's a word that... It's a very iffy word because then you're talking about cross-dressing and then you're saying, oh, only these people, like only women wear... Uh, uh, like only women wear dresses, for example. Uh, so people try to use the word transvestite a little bit more. Uh, but it, we talk, that, then we're talking about the same thing. So transvestite is a gender expression. And one can absolutely be transvestite and transgender. Absolutely. They don't have to be. Because they're two separate things. But they can be. They can be. Does this include drag queens? No. Uh, drag is a performance art. So just as uh, Hara is saying there, drag is a performance art. Uh, while transvestite is a gender expression. It doesn't have to be a, trans a performance art, for example. Uh, so yeah, drag queens, it's performing. Uh, so you have drag kings and drag queens. Uh, and someone identify as female uh, can still be a drag queen. Someone identify as male can still be a drag king. It is... Um, it is uh, a performance. Uh, it's a way of performing. Then it can also be a part uh, of the... Uh, it can also be a part of one's gender identity. There's a portent term as well. Uh, it is a negative word the trans community doesn't like, absolutely. But that is because when it's used towards trans people. But once again, transvestite is not... Trans people. Transvestite is a gender expression. It just has the word trans. And as we talked about before, trans is a Latin prefix that means on the other side of. That is what the word trans means. But then we're putting the word trans in front of it. So that is what transvestite is. And now when we talked about the word transvestite, let's talk about the word that people often, uh, often... Uh, yeah, exactly. Transvestite is an expression, not a performance. Exactly, exactly. So, now when we're talking about transvestite, let's take a look at uh, the last word, which is what a lot of people think that it's the same thing. And then we're talking about transsexual. So, transsexual uh, is an outdated term for transgender people. That is transsexual. It's an outdated term for transgender people. It has come from uh, both as a slur used to, towards trans people, but also because the medical diagnosis is called transsexualism. So that is uh, that is a medical uh, medical uh, diagnosis. It currently getting changed basically all over the world from transsexualism uh, transsexualism uh, to just using body dysmorphia uh, or to using uh, uh, gender reaffirming or similar. So it's currently getting changed, but it's still called transsexualism. Uh, so it comes from there and has been used as a derogatory, a derogatory slur towards the transgender community. So people do not use the term transsexual anymore and we generally we do not like the term being used towards us but once, but once again there's all guidelines, some actual rules. Uh, it's, it's different for every single individual. Some people are okay with it, some people are not. Me for example, I'm absolutely not okay with it. Absolutely not. I do not want to be with uh, because that is not a term that I identify with. But there are some older trans people, for example, that when they went uh, through the process, which we're going to be talking about just a little bit quickly, the legal process later, because there is a legal process to go through to be able to uh, change a little letter on your passport. Um, that, uh, in that process, then it was called tra uh, transsexualism through the entire process. Like right now, doctors are trying to not use the term as well. They only use it for the diagnosis. Uh, so basically... Uh, that term is something we do not use anymore, but they sometimes use them, which is 100% okay. If they identify with that word, then they are okay to identify with that word, uh, but not all of the people do. And so, yes, as senior says, it's a term to avoid. Uh, some people are okay with it. The general consensus is that people are not okay with it. So do not assume that people are allowed 
uh, uh, or the people like having it used towards them. And it's also currently uh, that transsexual people think about sexual attraction, which is not it's about gender identity and it's called transgender. Uh, and also there are a lot of people right now that are starting to take the term transsexual and create it into a sexuality where this type of people we call chasers and chasers is someone that goes after a person that is trans and like wants to have sex with them or similar because of the fact that they are trans that is a chaser so that is a chaser someone that is actively going towards someone or actively being attracted to someone because of the fact that they are trans and there are people that are currently trying to take the word transsexual and use that as that term for their sexuality even though being a chaser and being actively attracted to someone because of the fact that they are trans is transphobic because you are fetishizing the person, you are fetishizing their identity and not seeing them as a person, you're seeing them as trans and you're fe fetishizing that. So we don't use the term transsexual, uh, it's an outdated term that is no longer used, it's only used within the medical field for the diagnosis itself and people are trying to use it as a sexuality to legitimize being a chaser. Uh, so that uh, is a term that people do not use, uh, so try to not use it. So that is the term transsexual. Do we have any more, do we have any questions regarding these terms that we've gone through right now? And only the terms we've gone through right now. Otherwise, if you have uh, another question related to another term, you're more than welcome to ask it uh, in, the, in the little link. But two of the terms we have talked about right now. It seems like we don't. Then let's continue. Let's continue. And now we're only going to be talking about this quickly. We're not going to go in through it, uh, but we're going to be talking about it just quickly. And that is trans legal journey. A lot of people think that there is no trans legal journey, but there is. To be able to access hormones and surgeries in the majority of the world and to also being able to change a little letter in your passport, you have to go through a legal process. So you don't wake up one day, take a pill and then you're done. It is a legal process that is long, that is taxing. So a lot of people don't think that it's something big, but I'm going to show you is how big it is. That's how big it is. It's a lot of boxes, a lot of places, a lot of words. So we're not going to go through this uh, every single part. We've done that in a previous lecture. I'm just going to be mentioning it quickly. So it's a long process that goes through multiple psychiatrists, multiple therapists, multiple doctors. Uh, and multiple psychologists as well so it's not a lot of people think and especially people uh, that try to limit transgender care think that it goes very very quickly that you just get it willy-nilly you don't it's a very long process you meet multiple people within the field and they have tons of different places where they can say no we not do not deem this enough we do not deem that this is safe enough for this to do and so you're forced to restart from the start so it takes a very very long time it differs from country absolutely but it's relatively similar in all of the world and in some places it costs money as well uh, so when you see this when you see all of these different parts, how long do you think that this process takes? And if you know, don't write in chat, but how long do you think it takes? It, it takes? How many years do you think that this takes? Years, years, absolutely. Ages, ages, absolutely. Five years, two to three years. Five years at least. Decades, 84 years, four years, two years. We have tons of different guesses there. And the standard is 10 years. So the standard is 10 years. And this is the map from the Swedish system. Uh, and it might seem like it's a lot. 
And sadly, I have to inform you that Sweden is the best in the world when it comes to transgender care. Sweden is the best in the world when it comes to transgender care and going through the entire process. And for us, it's a standard of five years. And around the world, it's a standard for five years as well. And currently, it's taking even longer because the queues are full. We have four places because one closed down. We have four places in the entirety of Sweden that handle transgender people. We have about 10 teams a site, but five to 10 teams a site, uh, which means absolute max 40 teams to handle people. Uh, and currently, there are over 2,000 people in queue every single one of these places. Which means that there's currently a standard of 8,000 people in queue to go through this process. To either change, uh, change the icon or change the letter to get hormones, to do surgeries, to do all of them, to do one of them. It's currently 5 years and 8,000 people in queue. And some places have stopped taking in new requests uh, to go through this because there's so many people and once again i will remind you that this is the best in the world the best care in the world so it's a long process so people might think that this goes very very quickly that you just meet one person that you get hormones immediately that is not how it works it takes a long time unless you're incredibly lucky and just as someone wrote in chat previously you are not allowed to start until you're 18. So it is a long, long process. And yeah, just as make is writing there, like the places we have in Sweden, they are around major cities. So basically, in the north, if you live in the north of Sweden, the closest place is minimum 12 hours away. And like what Mecca is saying, it's a person living on an island they have to go from that island to the mainland to the other side of the country because that is the closest place for them to go. That is how that works. And five is the standard. It can take even more. And in Sweden, we don't give hormone stoppers either. So, this is a long process. It doesn't go quickly. It's not something that just happens overnight. So you don't have to be worried of them doing things on children because children are not allowed, you are not allowed to start this process until you're 18. Gender affirming care when you're under 18 means a therapist, it means someone to be able to talk to, to get support to or support from to meet other trans people to get support systems in some countries it means being able to start hormone blockers which basically means that you are not going uh, to go through a normative puberty uh, at that time but you can stop the blockers whenever you want and your body is going to create a hormone again and go through the process that you were uh, that your body said you were going to go through without pretty much any issue. So that is what gender affirming care means for trans people that are under the years of 18. It doesn't mean hormones, it doesn't mean surgery, it doesn't mean anything like that. It means maybe hormone blockers, and most importantly, reputical support. Someone to talk to, find security networks. Because this is a big and a long process. So, don't worry. You don't have to worry for the children. And let's see. We're going to be skimming that. We're just going to keep going because I don't have to. I don't have to. <laughs> so now we're going to be talking about misgendering. Uh, so I'm going to be raising uh, my hand right now again as well for trigger warning. We're going to be talking about misgendering for a little bit. Uh, so if you uh, don't want to talk about that or if you want to turn uh, mute right now, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, I'm going to write my, uh, raise my hand. Uh, this is then about misgendering. Uh, 
and I'm going to be lowering my hand uh, when uh, we're done talking about misgendering. So, we're going to be talking about misgendering. Misgendering, we mentioned it before, is that when someone calls you a pronoun, that the, the pronoun that you do not use, or calling you female, for example, when you're male, calling you girl when you're a boy, for example, that is misgendering. And some people might think that it doesn't happen often, but it happens. It happens pretty much every single day. Imagine you, you're going through the store and they say, oh, hi lady, or hello miss, just for being polite. And every single time, that hurts so much. Because every single time someone misgenders you, you just get reminded that society does not see you the way that you see yourself. And it sucks. And it's hurts immensely so if you know that someone's trans try your absolute best to don't misgender them and if you don't know someone's pronouns ask for their pronoun ask and it's important to know as well that we, uh, people are writing in chat intentional and unintentional misgendering and first of all i want to make uh, make it clear that if you accidentally miss someone it's okay it happens. We're all just human. And every now and again, you might misgender someone. Hell, I sometimes misgender myself. <laughs> it accidentally happens sometimes. We're all just human. The important thing is that you do not do it intentionally. So if you unintentionally, if you accidentally misgender someone, say, fuck, I'm sorry, and correct yourself, and then keep doing, keep do, going with the conversation. Because one might think that you, you want to say, oh, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man, I, I always see you as a male, I've always seen you as a male, I've never seen you as something else. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. Because if everyone made a big deal out of it every time it happened, I promise you, I'd still probably be standing in the same spot that I was standing in about a year ago. <laughs> we don't need to have it as a big thing every single time. So instead you say, fuck, I'm sorry correct yourself and then keep going with the conversation and whenever you hear someone that accidentally uh, misgender someone or intentionally misgender someone make sure to correct them even if it is a friend even if there's someone uh, at work the best thing you can do or one of the best things you can do as an ally is to correct people and remind people of the proper pronouns and the right name to continuously do that and then we're talking about intentional misgendering. So intentional misgendering is when you decide to actively misgender someone. A lot of people, uh, when they do this, uh, usually say, oh, but they, them is plural. Uh, or, oh, there's only male and female, which one, no, they, them has been used as singular for very, 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 very many years. Uh, and no, there's not only male and female. There, there's not. Whether you're talking with philosophical identification or literal medicine, there's not just two. There's not. So intentional misgendering is when you actively misgender someone. That is intentional misgendering. And if you say, oh, but I'm going to be doing it anyway, then I want you to make, it, make you very aware that in a lot of countries of the world, it's illegal. Because that is hate speech. That is discrimination. And that is hate towards a minority group. And a lot of countries in the world protect uh, gender identity as one of them. So uh, as one uh, of under the clause of that. So doing that intentionally in a lot of con a lot of countries is actually illegal. And if you do not want to be misgendered, why should you misgender someone else? It's just going to bring him pain. Just going to bring him suffering sucks and i'm gonna be raising another hand for another trigger warning which is suicidal statistics so i'm gonna be raising this hand about suicidal statistics and i'm gonna go through it a little bit quickly so when i remove this hand we're done talking about that part so misgendering 
It's one of the biggest reasons for why the suicidal statistics when it comes to transgender people is so high. And in Sweden, talking that it's about it's about 32 to 40 percent of trans people have either seriously considered or committed suicide. It is a huge, huge number. But one of the biggest parts of that is misgendering. So it happens every second, every day, no matter where we go. It happens. So that is a huge, huge reason to really try your absolute best to not misgender, to not dead name. And, and if you hear someone accidentally do it, correct them. And we're also, when we're talking about uh, correcting in that type, uh, in that type of way, also remember that if you're talking about someone with someone else and that person is not there, still use the right pronouns, still use the right name. And lowering that high now, we're keeping this one up. Uh, and it's the same, for example, uh, what is it? Four months ago now, uh, Elliot Page. When Elliot Page uh, came out as trans, uh, a lot of news media wrote uh, their dead name and then wrote uh, Elliot Page and then, oh, went from female to male. And the important way to talk about there is that if you're going to be mentioning someone that has come out as trans, and uh, for example, Elliot Page, and you don't have to write the own name, you don't have to misgender them. Instead say, oh, this person that's famous for this role in the TV series, for example. Try to refer to them in that way. And to be quite honest, if someone cannot connect those dots then, then Elliot Page, it, it truly doesn't matter for that individual if Elliot Page is trans then, because they generally do not know who Elliot Page is anyway. So instead, try to connect it to that. And if the person misgendered them, say, oh no, it's Elliot, no? Their name is Elliot Page. They're trans. And you don't have to say from male to female or from female to male. Instead, try to put it in that type of manner instead. And if you don't know someone's pronouns, try to use a gender neutral pronoun uh, like they, them, or ask for their pronoun. And the hand is down. And now when we're talking about uh, misgendering and dead naming, we were talking about pronouns a little bit there. And so now we are going to go into pronouns. And we've uh, we mentioned pronouns a little bit before. And once again, I want to make it very, very clear here that what you see here is guidelines, not actual rule. It's guidelines, not actual. So as a general guideline, someone identifies as trans man uses he, him. Someone that is trans woman uses she, her. Someone that is non-binary or gender fluid or gender queer or uh, other types of uh, non-binary identities uh, or, a gen or for example, agender or bigender, they use what they like. So people can use he, him, she, uh, she, uh, she, her, they, them. We also have neo pronouns, uh, which are neo pronouns are pronouns that are not uh, that are not accepted within uh, within the language um, that they're used in. Uh, so, for example, uh, X, C, C, I, and similar. Uh, yes, ikibinar, I forgot to change it. Ikibinar uh, means um, means non-binary. <laughs> that is what non-binary means. And also, some people mix it up. Exactly, some people mix it up. And it's also very important to know that pronouns does not mean gender identity. So, you can identify a cis female and use the pronouns she, they. That is a hundred percent okay, because your pronouns does not decide your gender identity. So it's important to remember that those are separate things, and there are guidelines, but they're not actual. They're just general guidelines. I talked about it before as well that if you don't know someone's pronouns, then ask. And it might seem a little bit weird to ask, but that's because we have to normalize it. We have to normalize it in society. And that's also that if you ask people their pronouns, you are going to make it so much easier for transgender people. 
Because if only transgender people say their pronouns, then suddenly we are going to start outing transgender people because they are the only ones saying their pronouns. That's why people are saying that it's so incredibly important to, example, uh, change or put in your pronouns in your Twitter bio or your Instagram bio uh, or anywhere where you have a bio. That's why it's so important to put in your pronouns because A, you're showing that you're an ally to the community and you're showing that, hey, pronouns, we talk about pronouns here, pronouns are important and we respect pronouns. And so even if you're not trans, you write, okay, these are my pronouns and you show that you're a safe space for them. And you're also helping normalize pronouns and you're also making sure that trans people are more safe because they are not the only people that are coming out uh, with their pronouns, which is protecting them, and making them uh, be able to be them and express themselves more within society. And also, you can assume someone's pronouns just as little as you can assume someone's name. So you might be looking at someone's like, yeah, that person is a Sebastian. A hundred percent, that person is a Sebastian. And then you go up and say, hi, what's your name? And they say, oh, it's Richard. But you were like, but you looked like a Sebastian. Yeah, but their name is Richard. So you can assume someone's name just as little as you can assume someone's pronouns. So if you don't know their pronouns, ask. And just as Mecca is saying there, it might seem weird because it might seem obvious because one is part of the norm. So that's why it's so important to normalize it. So what we did, uh, what we did at my work is that we uh, we had a person write in anonymously and said that I do not feel comfortable coming out as trans because I do not feel that this working environment and this site is uh, transgender inclusive and friendly. And I was like, okay, then we have to fix this. And so what I made sure that everyone started doing is that whenever they introduce themselves to new people working at the pl at company, they say, hi, my name is Gabriel and my pronouns are he slash him. So every single time someone say says their pronouns, whenever they get introduced, whenever they introduce themselves to a new group, they, uh, they introduce themselves with their pronouns. And at first they, they made a few jokes, one make the Apache helicopter joke, uh, please don't ever do that joke. Uh, they decided to do that, uh, do that joke there. Uh, but then when they noticed that people were actually appreciating this, people were actually responding with their pronouns and people taking it seriously, they started taking it seriously as well. Which ended with that one day uh, we had, we uh, people introduced themselves with their pronouns. And then after we'd left, the person that was in charge there uh, introduced herself with her pronouns. And then she let everyone in the room say their name and their pronouns. And if you don't want to say your pronouns, you absolutely do not have to. But if they want to say their pronouns, they said their pronouns. And then a few people said, uh, like the majority of people said he, him or she, her. And then one person said, why the fuck are we asking about pronouns? Why is this a thing? that we're even going to talk about. What is this? And then one person, the first day they were ever here, they've never met any of these people before. They've never been in this place ever before. They were completely new. They said, because pronouns are important because I identify as they, them. So they dared to write there in front of everyone say that it was important and what their pronouns are because we had already established a behavior culture in that room that pronouns are important and pronouns are something that we talk about and so that's why it's important to make sure to normalize pronouns in all the ways that you can so when you introduce yourself to someone say your name and your pronoun and when we're talking about pronouns, we're also going to be doing this uh, in chat as well. We do this every time, uh, every stream in chat. So everyone, let's take a round of pronouns in chat. Write uh, your pronouns in chat. If you do not want to write your pronouns, you absolutely do not have to if you don't want to. But if you want to, let's write our pronouns, uh, write our pronouns in chat. My pronouns are he slash him. And I do not like to be referred to as normative female efficates. So even if you use it as a, uh, as a slang, please do not say, uh, do not call me queen, uh, girl or sis. Instead say uh, king, boy uh, or 
bro. Or as some people like to say, the general neutral term, my liege. So my pronouns are he slash him. Thank you so much for writing uh, your pronouns in chat, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also mentioned that I said, uh, I said normative female efficates. Well, then we're talking about gender neutral language or gender inclusive language. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a look here what this means. For a lot of people, we use a lot of words in our everyday life that might seem like they don't they're not gendered. So a lot of people, for example, as, uh, as gay slang, they use queen, for example. Some people say dudes, uh, boys, um, uh, fellas, for example. A lot of terms, or guys, the people are like, yeah, this is not gender, this is not gendered. But it's important to know that for some people, it is gendered. So we're going to be taking a look at that instead, and what type of words you can use instead of those gendered terms and why they're important and everyone thank you so much for starting our ape train <laughs> thank you so much babes thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you and what we're going to be looking at here then is that we're Ooh, you're making it difficult to focus <laughs> everyone thank you i'm going to thank you all uh everyone uh, after after the lecture thank you so much everyone thank you thank you thank you Whoa, okay i'm gonna focus i'm gonna focus now <laughs> So, ah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Babes, what the fuck? Oh, thank you so much. Babes, Jesus Christ, thank you. Oh, fuck, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep focusing. I'm gonna try to keep focusing, okay? Oh, I'm gonna keep focusing. I'm gonna thank you all later. Thank you. I'm gonna keep focusing now. Okay, gender neutral language. Gender inclusive language, everyone. Gender inclusive language. Uh, so we're talking about a lot of different terms that people generally use. And what we're gonna start about, we're gonna talk about the terms dudes, guys, lads, and fellas. All of these terms are used uh, a lot uh, by a lot of people. And this is so difficult to focus right now. <laughs> oh my god, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, this uh, is different types uh, of terms that a lot of people use. A lot of people say, for example, uh, guys uh, or dudes and don't mean anything gendered by it. And for some people, they might feel like it is uh, gender neutral. But for a lot of people, it isn't. And then it's important that we actually take a look at that and we try to fix that as much as possible to make sure that people feel uh, feel welcome and loved and included. That is so incredibly, Jesus fuck. That is so incredibly important. And so guys and dudes, uh, they do stem from... <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> I'm trying to focus! Oh my god! Jesus I'm trying to focus! Oh, I love you all so much, thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, babes, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try focus. I'm gonna try focus now. Okay, I'm gonna try Jesus. Holy fuck. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try focus again. I'm gonna try focus again. Okay, I'm gonna try focus again. I'm gonna try. Okay, let's take a swig. Everyone, take whatever you're drinking and take a swig. Skull! Okay, focus, focus, Cap, focus. Okay, so. Dudes, guys, lads, and fellas. All of these types of different words do stem uh, from masculine parts, masculine normative parts within society. And people might think that fellas does not stem for that because it means a fellow. However, fella has been used very, very commonly and very, very connected uh, to uh, masculine presenting people. 
and so that has become a gendered term so dudes guys lads and fellas even though it doesn't feel to some people like it is gendered it is gendered to a lot of people so it's important that we make sure to try and make people as comfortable as possible as comfortable as possible so instead of using dudes guys lads and fellas well what can we say there are a few multiple of different types of terms and i've given some examples here which are for example folks friends peeps comrades and crew those are just a few of them and there are a multitude more so instead of saying gender terms try to find something that connects you all of you together so for example here we are a crew we have a pirate theme here on this stream and so we are a crew together and so we call each other crew members uh, and people call me captain and then we have people uh, we have like we have shipmates and all of that jazz so we call each other a crew so try to find something that relates all of you together so for example if you have a flower team call each other flowers try to find something that connects you together instead of something that is gendered and then also we have the very very common thing that people say ladies and gentlemen and a lot of people i've talking to for example uh one of my uh, one of my parents they talked about this as well and they are a lecturer at university and they say but how do i welcome people that like how do i welcome people uh and instead of saying uh instead of saying oh what is it called uh instead jesus christ everyone thank you so much for the hype train base thank you thank you thank you thank you holy shit thank you so much <laughs> so instead uh instead of saying that uh instead then of saying uh ladies and gentlemen try to use something that combines all of you together once again so as plus uh, just as daniel was saying for example designated guests uh ladies and gentlemen and everyone outside and in between is also a great way to do it that valen vane says as well and in swedish you can say gott folk instead of damer or herrar uh, honored friends honored guests uh esteemed uh, esteemed human and also there is a uh, there is a uh, not a cover what's it called there is, there is a oh what it's called I don't remember what it's called right now uh, but it's a very specific uh, it's very very specific group that I watch every year on Halloween uh, and uh, they uh, they call us a ma a macabre uh, and so whenever they uh, say hi to everyone there in the audience they don't say ladies and gentlemen Instead, they always say, uh, oh, I just need to remember this now. Instead, they always say, uh, lovers, uh, lovers of the macabre and those intrigued by the dark. Because you're all there to see some type of horror and similar. So they say, uh, lovers of the macabre and all those intrigued by the dark. Instead of saying, ladies and gentlemen. So try to find something that combines them all together instead. So that is a much better way to do it. And why we're saying that that's a much better way to do it, and why it's so important, for example, say folks, friend, peeps, comrades, and crew, instead of gendering terms, is because there is rarely any need to gender something. We don't always have to gender to gender terms, to gender words. And that's what we talked about previously as well. You don't need to gender sexual organs because there is nothing to gender. It is a sexual organ. And why do you need to gender or use a term that is gendered? If it is gendered, why do you have to use it? It's a term that is instead try to use gender inclusive language and gender neutral language to make sure that people feel included and loved and valid and don't feel dysphoria becoming into your chat which is so important incredibly important when you are a streamer for example or if you are a teacher as well try and use as much uh, gender neutral and gender inclusive language as you can to make sure that people feel comfortable 
to try to change out your words. Look at the words that you are using. What sayings are you using? And try to use other types uh, of words instead. Because some languages do have gendered terms. Like, for example, in German, basically everything is gendered, either male or female. And in Sweden, we have some gendered words, but not, not too many if they're not a part of, like an occupation uh, but try your best use gender neutral language so if there are gender terms is there a term you can use instead of that so instead of saying guys or dudes say folks peeps comrades or friends because it's important to respect people's pronouns it's important to expect people's gender identity and it's important to let us show and be us by using the LGBTQI plus acronym because it creates safe spaces and support systems for us because we are not normative. We do not have that. And you might not feel that you that is something that's needed because you have society to show that you are valid, that show that you are a part of the norm. We don't have that. So it's important for us to be able to have the LGBTQI plus acronym. It's important for us to have our words for identifications for us because it's us. And we can find each other and we can help each other and we can love each other. So try to use non-gendered language as much as you can. And if you mean a specific part, someone, mean genitalia, say genitalia. And make sure to respect people. And for all of you trans people out there, I want you to know that there is nothing called trans enough. If you identify as trans, you are trans. That's it. You don't have to do take hormones. You don't have to do surgeries. You don't have to do anything like that if you don't want to. You identify as trans, you are trans. It doesn't matter if you are out to everyone in the world. It doesn't matter if you're only out to yourself. It doesn't matter. Only thing that matters. You are happy. You identify as trans, you are trans. You are valid. You are loved. You are valid. Always, 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 always valid. I'm going to repeat that forever. You are valid. Trans is not a ladder. The journey. And all of our journeys look completely different. Within gender expression, gender identification. There are so many different parts. And your journey is what makes you unique and special. So... Only thing that matters, happy, identify as trans, you are trans, valid, truly, truly are, truly are. Now everyone, we are going to be having a pause. We're going to be taking a quick break everyone because we have been going for two and a half hours. <laughs> So we're going uh, a quick, quick break, and then we're going to be going through uh, questions. So if you have any type of questions, you write exclamation mark question in chat. Uh, you have uh, where you'll be able to send in questions there. We're going to be accepting questions for a little bit more. Uh, so we're going to go through those together. Uh, so I'm going to go around to the bathroom. You can submit your question there, both anonymously or non-anonymously if you like. And then we're going to go through it together. I'm going to go to the bathroom and get some water and get some more boy. Everyone, remember, drink some water, uh, eat some food, stand up and stretch a little bit. If you're wearing a binder and be binding for more than six hours, take it off right now. If you're binding with ace bandages, take it off right now and never do it again. It is incredibly dangerous. Make sure to take your medication. Take a breather. And if you're wearing a bra, yeet it. And always milk first. <laughs> and I will see you all in just a few minutes. <laughs> 